Hey guys and welcome to the show. So at this point in time, we've got a lot going on. You've got the game, we've got the Node.js server or API, and we've got our SQLite database. Now, when we're doing development, it's easy. You just spin up the Node.js server using Node server JS, and we go into GameX Studio 2 and we debug the game, and then everything just works. But we can't expect the player to do the same thing. We can't expect them to have Node on their machine. We can't expect to be giving them the project file that they debug through GameX Studio 2. We need to be able to give them a single executable file that they could interact with which should fire up our Node.js server. And then in a similar way to where Node.js fires up our SQLite database, we also can get that Node.js server to fire up our game. Now, before we get into the juicy bits, please make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell notification for updates. So on the screen, I've got a little diagram. At the top, we have our game, GameX Studio 2. In the middle, we have our server API, which is Node.js. And then right at the bottom, our database is SQLite. So we want to convert this into something like this where we have a launcher, one single executable. We double click on that. It fires up our server, our API, and that server API is responsible for firing up our database, creating our database if need be, as well as launching our actual game. And this will mean that we don't have to give the users instructions on how to start the game. They can just get this launcher. They can create a nice shortcut on the desktop if they want, things like that. So in order to achieve this, we're gonna to have to bundle these three important bits. We are going to create a launcher, which is an executable version of a Node.js file. And we're gonna tell our Node server to fire up our game and everything should just magically work. So first thing we want to do is go to GameX Studio. We're gonna say build, create executable. Here I wanna package as a zip because we're actually gonna unzip that and get the files out because later on we'll be packaging this ourselves. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this exe. Let's paste that in there, save it. Okay, let's go to that folder. You can see it, the console here is doing everything. It should open up where that zip file is. Let's go and extract that. And we're interested in the three files in here, data, options, and project. Put this back over here. Let's rename project to game, game.exe. Now, if I go to my server over here, and we've got our game over here. If I double click on my game, it's gonna be searching, searching, searching for our API, for our Node.js server, which isn't running. So you can see, cannot fetch data, retry, and so on. But if we go to our server over here, and we run node server JS, and then we run our game, it just works. Let's us come in, we can choose our character, we can move around, push escape, we can click continue. See, it's all working. But still, this is not enough. The user is not gonna be able to go in here and actually run our server like we're doing. So next up, what I wanna do, so we're gonna stop the server. We're gonna to go to this executor. We're gonna copy these files. Let's start to create our bundle folder. Then we're gonna go into our server over here. Let's make this full screen. We need to import const exec equals require child process. So exec allows us to execute a child. Um, there's a couple of these commands. There's fork, there's spawn, there's exec file. I've had the most success with exec. So that's one we're gonna be using today. Then over here, what we want, we wanna say start game. And inside start game, we say exec start game.exe function err this will give us some standard out and an error if we have one and that's a callback if error console error error we'll return otherwise we'll console log the output standard output just like that all right so this command is going to start our game we need to make sure that this executable is in the same folder and then down here, we're just gonna say console log game starting 
please do not close this window. And here we just say start game. Okay. So we have our start game up here, which calls exec. And then down here, we actually execute that function, which should run our game. So if we save that, so now that that's done, our server.js file is now ready to be converted into an executable because we can't, as I said before, give this to our user, they won't know what to do with it. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna npm install a package called pkg. And we're gonna put that in global, so we need a minus g. And that's gonna allow us access to this pkg package, which can convert a node.js file into an executable. So next up, we're going to run pkg server.js, so you tell it which file. Then if you run it just like that, it's going to output a Mac OS file, a Windows file, Linux file. But uh, we only want to just target node 12, win64, just like that. And that'll just create one executable for Windows 64 using node 12. Now, this file is going to contain node inside it, so it's expected to be a little bit big, but it is self-contained, which is what we're going for. All right, so let's just do its thing. And when it's done, you'll see there's a server exe file over here. So let's go back to our folder structure. Let's go to our server. Look at this, there's an executable. Let's call this launcher. We need to grab launcher and no modules. I'm also gonna grab the game DB, you don't really need to, but we're gonna copy these files and paste them in our bundle. Now, if we double click launcher exe, it should fire up our game exe and our database and all that cool stuff automatically. All right, there we go. So this is the console. It says listening on port 8080, connected to database game DB, game stone, please don't close this window. And on our right, it launched this game exe, that guy over there. And now we should be able to play our game as we did before. So let's move Mr. Mustard over here. Let's press escape, let's continue. It's all running as we did before, but we're just interacting with this launcher. So keeping this in mind, because the launcher itself is going to be, this is your console ultimately, you don't necessarily need to log things to the console that we don't really need anymore. So you can go into your controllers and remove these console logs because maybe you don't want the user to see all that stuff. It doesn't really matter. Once your game is ready to ship, get rid of all your logs. And that's pretty much how it works. Now, one thing to keep in mind is I've found exec and exec file to be a little bit unreliable. So for example, if I double click launcher, sometimes I just get the screen, which is game starting, please do not close this window, but nothing's here. Now I'm using exec in this example because it is far more reliable than exec file for some reason. Perhaps this is just in my case. Let's just actually go into more detail on this by printing out the standard error also. For more information. Let's package it up again. Let's go over here, back to our server. We'll just wait for this launcher to be created. Get rid of the old one. Maybe let's also go and delete all these console logs while we're here. Okay, let's try this again, now that we don't have any, any logs floating about. Okay, it's finished. Copy this into our bundle folder. And we need to make sure we're not running it so that we can overwrite. And let's call this launcher. And let's try again. Let's see if we actually get some juicy errors. Okay, so in that case, nothing happened. It didn't launch, no error. Let's try again. Didn't launch, no error. See, that time it launched just fine. Very, very strange. 
Yeah, that time it launched is fine too. So I'm still doing research into what the best way to launch this child process is. So far, this seems to be the most reliable, but it's not as reliable as I need it to be. So I'm going to keep you guys posted on this. But for now, just so you understand the concept, this is where we're heading. So if you found this tutorial educational helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Project files, as always, can be found on my Patreon post. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so for $1 a month. I do appreciate the support. So until next time, happy coding. I'll see you then.